Okay, so you've written about the history of history. You've written a primary source analysis paper. Now comes the big one, a historiographic essay. In this video, we're going to look at what a historiographic essay is and how to go about the process of writing one. So let's get going. This video is going to be divided into two parts. In the first part, we're going to look at what a historiographic essay is. I'm going to define it for you and tell you a little bit about what the purpose of historiographic essays are. In part two, we're going to talk about the process, the process for researching and writing a historiographic essay. All right, let's start pretty basic. What is a historiographic essay? Okay, let's start with this basic question. What is a historiographic essay? I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the structure of a historiographic essay and also why we write them. So to start this conversation, we need to remind ourselves of something. At the very beginning of this course, we talked about how the word historiography has like two kinds of definitions. The first definition of historiography was the one that we really wrestled with in the first module of this course. In this sense, historiography essentially just means the history of history, the history of the historical discipline. Historiography is a narrative account of how the discipline emerged and how it developed and changed over time. And if you remember from reading Popkin's book, it includes all sorts of big names like people like Herodotus and Ranka and, and Mary Beard and all sorts of people. And the purpose of this historiography is to show how the discipline itself is complex and contingent, how it's changed, how it's been different depending on when people practice it and how. But that was only the first definition of historiography. There was another definition of historiography that really is going to become the most relevant for us in this module of the course. This definition of historiography is essentially the historical writing of a particular topic or on a particular topic. What this means is that historiography is essentially the collection of works by historians that are looking at the same question or the same historical topic. Historiography, in this sense, is really focused on the approaches and the arguments that historians have brought to understanding this topic. And its purpose is essentially to function as a literature review for new research projects. I'll tell you more about this in a little bit. So why is this important? Well, it's important because historiographic essays are essentially a part of the second process of historiography, or the sort of second definition of historiography. Historiographic essays are analyses of this type of historiography. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's get a little more specific on what we mean by a historiographic essay. A historiographic essay essentially analyzes a historiographic debate, definition number two, right? A historiographic debate on a specific topic or question. In other words, the purpose of the essay is to look at how historians have differed in terms of their interpretations and methods in studying a particular historical topic. Historiographic essays focus entirely on analyzing secondary sources. Again, this is because what they're really um, doing is analyzing the arguments that historians have made about the past. This is what differentiates history from historiography in this sense. Historiography is the study of how historians have practiced history. But a historiographic essay isn't simply just a series of book reviews or reviews of uh, works by historians. Instead, the essay is really focused on explaining the debate that historians are having around a particular topic or question. And that's a little challenging to kind of figure out, but we're going to talk about this more in class and into the future so that you understand exactly what this means. Ultimately, historiographic essays are really just about explaining the how and why of historians, right? How and why historians have differed on a particular question. Okay, so why? Why do we write historiographic essays? Well, first, let me just tell you that professional historians still write historiographic essays. This is a sort of genre of historical writing that still exists today. 
And the main reason is because historiographic essays function as a sort of lit review on a particular research topic. You might have encountered this in other fields, like, I don't know, social science fields, like psychology or sociology, right? Where people will have to do kind of a review of the literature that's already been written on a particular topic before they do new research. The function of that essentially is just to um, open up the door to write something new. If you want to undertake a, a research project in history, right, if you want to undertake some sort of new research into a historical topic, well, then you have to know first what's already been done before you can add anything new to the conversation. That's what historiographic essays do. But along with that, historiographic essays map out the, the possible approaches that historians have used to study a particular topic. So they're not just focusing on the various arguments that historians have made. They're also focusing on the methodologies historians have used to understand the past. This is also really, really helpful for people who want to do research because it shows them what are the types of ways that you can approach a historical topic. What are the types of sources that people use? What are the kind of uh, viewpoints that they take, the lenses that they employ to try to get at the past? So in brief, historiographic essays are prerequisites for original historical research. You have to do this work of historiography before you can e ever undertake a new kind of historical research project. And the side effect of this work is that historiographic essays remind us that history is complex. It's shaped by humans writing in particular times and places. Doing this kind of historiographical analysis shows us that historians oftentimes disagree. And ultimately, that just reaffirms what we know about history, that history is a really complex discipline. That's one of the things that makes history so interesting, and I would argue it's one of the things that makes history so valuable. So now you know what a historiographic essay is, let's take you through the process of writing one. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you write a historiographic essay? How do you do historiographical research? Well, let's just start by thinking about the whole process. The process is not that dissimilar to the process that you employed for your primary source papers. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to conceptualize the topic that you want to focus on. Again, you could run with basically something very similar to what you did with your primary source paper. The difference here with the historiographic essay topic is that you're not deciding on the topic that you want to research so much as you're trying to find what are the things that historians are, are discussing about that topic. So you're really just searching for a debate. Where is a conversation that historians are having about a particular topic from the past? So once you have this idea in your head, the next step is to find secondary sources. We're going to go over that in the next video. You're going to figure out some strategies to find good secondary sources that will get at a historiographic debate. Once you find them, you have to read and analyze them. And that's sort of the video, the next video after that. I'll give you a method on how to read secondary sources effectively, particularly looking for information that, we're going, that will be relevant to a historiographic essay. And then the final step is just to write a paper, right? To use that analysis and put it uh, down onto the page. So this is the process you're going to go through now to write these historiographic essays. But before we go further on this process, I have to teach you some vocabulary. You need to learn the lingo of historiographic essays and historiographic research. Okay, term number one, beachhead source. A beachhead source is kind of the first source that you find that's really directly relevant to the topic that you want to focus on. Why do I call it a beachhead source? Because it's essentially going to open the door to finding lots more sources on that topic. The best beachhead sources are sources that are really recent. The more recent they are, usually the more helpful they are in finding other secondary sources on that topic. So why are beachhead sources so useful? Well, because of our second term, poaching the notes. What is poaching the notes? Well, poaching the notes is essentially a way to build out a bibliography, to find lots of other secondary sources on the same historical topic. Essentially, all you do is you find one source, right? One beachhead source, a journal article or a book or something. And then you go to the footnotes and the bibliography of that source, and you find all the other secondary sources that that source cites. This is a great way of building a bibliography very, very quickly. It's called poaching the notes. You go and you basically steal other people's citations and use that to build out your bibliography. And the process here that you go through in trying to find enough uh, sources for this historiographic essay is to find a beachhead source, poach the notes, then find those sources and poach their notes and do this over and over and over again. What you're gonna be left with is a huge bibliography of sources and that's great. That's exactly what we want. 
Because to understand a historiographic debate, you have to find essentially like every historical work that's been written on that debate. And so in the process of finding secondary sources, you start with a beachhead source, you kind of poach the notes and build out that bibliography, and really you want to get to a point that we call critical mass. Critical mass is essentially when you get to a point where you are poaching the notes on a source that you've just seen, and basically you start going through their footnotes and you go, yeah, I already have that one. Yeah, I have that one too. Yes, I've already found that one. Yes, I found that one too. And when you get to a point where you basically found almost all the secondary sources that a person cites on a particular topic, then you've reached critical mass. You've found essentially the whole of the debate. Now, rest assured, that is going to be way more sources than you're going to have to actually deal with for your essay. That's okay. That's the process. The first thing you want to do is find everything you can on that debate as much as possible. And then from there, you're going to narrow it down. So how do you narrow it down? Well, you narrow it down by focusing on what I call a core source or core sources. First of all, shout out to Planks. Great for your core. Second, what is a core source? Well, a core source is essentially a secondary source that gets talked about and cited over and over and over again in lots of different uh, books, articles, and essays. So when you're going through your process of poaching the notes and you keep seeing the same book being cited over and over again, that tells you that that book is probably a core source. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that a core source doesn't necessarily mean it's the best source. Sometimes books are core sources because they're really, really lousy. But that makes them really important for the historiographic debate because a really, really lousy book can spark other historians to write lots of other books responding to that book. And so in analyzing the debate, one of the things you'll have to notice is, well, hey, this one book, this one kind of lousy book, was really important because it essentially gave birth to a whole debate about this topic. So you pay attention to your core sources because they're going to be the ones that you really feature in your historiographic essay. And that's because your historiographic essay is not going to write about every single book, article, and essay that you found. That's not possible. There aren't enough pages for that. So instead, what you're going to choose is a representative sample. A representative sample is a handful of sources that represent the various positions that historians have taken or the various methodologies that they've employed in the historiography that you're focusing on. So you're just going to choose a handful of sources. Some of them will be core sources, right? Ones that people talk about a lot in order to describe the whole of the conversation, the whole of the debate. And that's what you're going to write about in your historiographic essay. Not the critical mass, that's way too many, but instead the representative sample that you chose to, yeah, represent the whole of the debate. Okay, this is where I'm supposed to edit in some sort of uh, lightning strike or scary sound or spooky background or something like that because the next things that I'm going to say are my sort of warnings for historiographic essays. Okay, warning number one. You are writing a historiographic essay, not a history essay. This may seem simple. This may feel like something that you already know, but I will tell you that every single semester I have a student who makes this mistake, and I don't want you to be one of them. So what do I mean by you are writing a historiographic essay, not a history essay? What I mean is that this essay is focused on talking about what historians have argued about the past. It is not focused on the past itself. And again, a historiographic essay talks about arguments and methods of historians, not about the past itself. Okay, second warning. Do not wait to work on this project. Start immediately. Don't wait. Why? Because historiographic essays are a lot of work. They take a long time. The next video that you're going to see is going to show you how long it takes to work on a historiographic essay because it's going to show you the process of finding secondary sources. And that process takes a long time, um, sometimes a long time just to find lots of things and sometimes a long time to get them to you. So you can't wait on this. You have to start working on this immediately. I've had too many semesters where students have come up to me a week or two before the deadline and said that they just started writing this paper, and I have to tell them, I think it's impossible for you to finish this. Don't be one of those people. Don't wait. Get to work on this now. Warning number three, you must have what my former advisor used to call the entrepreneurial spirit. What that means, essentially, is you have to have the self-discipline to motivate yourself to do research on your own time, not during class not because I asked you to do it, 
but because you know that in a month, you're going to have to turn in a historiographic essay. And there's a lot of work that goes into that. So you're going to have to spend some time on Friday night, instead of going out with your friends and eating pizza, going to the library and looking for secondary sources, or hanging out in your room reading journal articles, or going to the computer lab and typing up your essay. In any case, you have to have the self-discipline to start working on this early and to keep working on it throughout the rest of the semester. Okay, last warning. Get ready to read. There's a lot of reading involved in this essay. You're going to have to read lots of books and articles and essays. I'm going to teach you how to read very efficiently and effectively, but just know you got a lot of reading coming your way. So get ready. Okay, so what have we learned? Well, we've learned that historiographic essays are essentially secondary source analysis papers. They're where you analyze what historians have written about the past. The main purpose of a historiographic essay is basically to kind of lay the foundation for historical research. You can't know what you can add to our understanding of the past until you know what people have already written about. And there are lots of phases to this research, from conceptualizing the idea of the topic, uh, finding secondary sources, analyzing, reading those secondary sources, and then uh, organizing some sort of essay that gives a take of how the historiographical debate has changed over time. And then I finished off by giving you some warnings, and I want to kind of emphasize or re-emphasize them here. Remember, please don't wait for this. This process takes a long, long time. It takes a while to get secondary sources and find them. It takes a long time to read these secondary sources. So don't wait till the last minute with this project. And my final tip here is just to come and talk to me. Um, a lot of times students will, uh, will sort of struggle with this assignment. And, but if they come and talk to me fairly regularly throughout the rest of the semester, oftentimes I can catch things if they're going astray or I can sort of help out in finding sources or reading and understanding sources. Uh, in other words, I'm here to kind of help you pull off this project. So don't be afraid to come into office hours. Come talk to me. Send me emails, okay? All right, that's it for this lesson. Good job. See you in class.